The Thai phrase, don't be selfish, literally means don't look after yourself, as opposed to looking after the common good. And the John Sawat always took, he always questioned that phrase. Because who else are you going to look after? Who, you've got to look after yourself. In fact, you're the person you have to look after more than anybody else. And that's not saying be selfish. But you look after yourself wisely, which means that you develop good qualities in mind. Things like generosity and virtue, where you actually are helping other people. But you do have to look after yourself, because nobody else can do it for you. As the Buddha said, when you get yourself as a refuge, you get a refuge that's hard to find. If you don't have that refuge, he said, who else could be your refuge? Or as the John Swift put it another time, we each have one person in the world, i.e. the one person we're responsible for. We're responsible for our thoughts, our words, our deeds. We can't be responsible for anybody else's. And yet, all too often, that's what we're concerned about. We want to stop somebody else from doing this or encourage them to do that without turning around to look at, well, are we doing what's right? This is why we train our minds. It's because our actions come from here. This is the area for which we're responsible. We develop qualities like mindfulness, ardency, alertness. So we can see what we're doing, and then we have the strength to admit a mistake and do what we can not to repeat the mistake. In other words, if something that we like doing is going to get bad results, we have to figure out ways to prevent ourselves from doing that thing. If something we don't like doing but it's going to give good results, we have to talk ourselves into doing that. That's a large part of ardency right there. Another time, John Sawat was asked, you know, if only Buddhism had a god, give people a sense that you know, there was somebody out there looking after them when they couldn't quite make it on their own. And John Sawat's response was, if there's some god who could ordain that if I took a mouthful of food, everybody in the world would get full. I would bow down to that God. But we're not connected that way. For all that they say that we're interconnected, the interconnections are actually the cause of suffering. We're interconnected to people who can do a lot of harm. We're interconnected to a world that can snuff us out very easily. All we need is an earthquake or a tsunami. It's like the earth shrugging a little bit. You know, not thousands of people can die. It's not the case that this interconnected system is designed for the well-being of everybody. It eats everybody up, and everybody else is eating everybody up too. And so our best contribution to the con connected system is to get out and to be a good example to others. It's not like we don't hope for other people to find the way out as well. We hope that they will. That's why we spread thoughts of goodwill every day. May all beings be happy. But primarily so that we can keep watch over our own actions. And then realizing to whatever extent we can help others, we're happy to help. But it has to start here. If you're going to tell people the right way to, to cook an egg, maybe it's good that you know how to cook the egg yourself. So everything can, keeps coming back to it. your actions right here, right now, right here, right now. And the Buddha was talking about the evolution of the world, and the devolution of the world. In other words, how society develops and then how it declines. He kept saying it, it all comes from the actions of beings. It's our interconnected actions that create the world at large. But then the world of your experience as the result of your actions. And it's an area that you don't share with anybody else. You know that old question about, does blue 
the way you see blue, does it look the same way as other people see blue? You don't know. There's no way you could ever know. The pain you feel. Nobody else can feel that for you. They can see the signs that you have pain and they can sympathize, but they can't really feel your pain. So when the Buddha says, focus on the issue of why you're suffering, he's saying, focus on this area of your awareness, the area that you don't share with anybody else. And look in here as well for the, the cause of the suffering and also for the solution. In other words, it's not the case that we suffer because of things outside. I mean, there can be bad things outside, but we don't have to suffer from them. We suffer from, from, from them because of our own lack of skill, our own lack of understanding. So the cause is inside, but the solution can also be inside, the qualities that you develop. Virtue, concentration, discernment, based on a foundation of generosity and goodwill. It's right here that the real work has to be done. And when the work is done here, to the point where you have something solid inside, okay, then you can share. But after, after, to that point, you've really got to work on, as the John Tsuat would say, getting yourself. He would often comment as we're getting the monastery started. He says, we're not here to get anybody else. We're here to get ourselves. And by, by that he meant we're not going to go out of our way to make things attractive or change things, change the drama or change the vinya in order to appeal to people. We use the dharma, we use the vinya to practice. And if anyone else wants to practice that way, we're happy to have them come. But there's no need to go running out and trying to get people to come in. As he said, it's not that he couldn't think of ways of attracting people to the monastery, but every time he did, if it had nothing to do with the Dharma of the Vinaya, he felt ashamed. He would think of a John Mun, what a John Mun might think. But look, we've got we've got a, a monastery that's grown. He died 15 years ago, as of today. And the monastery is still going. So even though he was looking after himself, we're benefiting from that. And that's how real helpfulness in the Dharma happens. By looking after your own thoughts, words, and deeds, by looking after, specifically looking after your mind. That's how the Dharma is spread. In other words, it's spread by actual actions, not just by words. There was a piece recently about how Buddhists ought to get off of their cushion and get out there in the world and deal with the real causes of suffering which are out there in society. And they're totally missing the point. The real causes are in here. The Buddha himself saw that you could change the world. It would never be enough for people. As he said, even if it rained gold coins, it wouldn't be enough for our desires. So the pursuit of an ideal world out there, or a perfect world out there, it's never ending. And a lot of people in creating a perfect world can create a lot of messes. I mean, the word for perfection that they use in the canon it just applies to qualities you develop in the mind. That's where perfection can be found. The world is always going to be imperfect. But there is such a thing as perfect happiness. And it doesn't harm anybody. It doesn't place any burdens on anybody at all. Buddha gives us that test for what counts as dharma. One in terms of the goal, to release the mind from fetters and to release it from passion. In other words, to induce dispassion. And then there are the things you do to, to attain that goal. You have to learn how to be content. You have to learn how to shed all of your unhealthy conceit, unhealthy pride. 
Any thoughts of getting back at other people? And you have to put forth effort. And you also have to think about how your practice has an effect on other people. In other words, you want to stay unentangled, unburdensome. That's how you test the Dharma. But it's a Dharma that makes you self-reliant and also makes you less of a burden on other people. In other words, the purpose here, it really is to get out. You might say the Buddha was an escapist, but he was an escapist in that best sense of the word. In other words, he sees all the dangers that we create for ourselves and for other people. He said this is a system that we're Eating is built into the system. And so you want to look for the escape. And finding it, you leave a trail behind for other people. So try to look after yourself in the best sense of the word, with wisdom and discernment, compassion, and all the other good qualities that are required to really look after yourself properly. John Sawat gave us an example, and let's hope that we can be an example to others.